everyone, welcome to a very, very special episode of The Witching Hour. This is our Halloween party episode, and it is brought to you by Screen Pass, which is presented by Movies Anywhere. Movies Anywhere is a great service for digital collectors, bringing your favorite movies together into one library, no matter where you purchase them. And now with Screen Pass, you can give your friends access to your favorite movies without them ever leaving your collection. Tired of never being able to talk about the major spoiler because your one friend never saw the movie? Just send them a Screen Pass and let them catch up. With over 7,000 eligible titles on Movies Anywhere, Screen Pass is a unique game changer for sharing your love of movies with others. All they need to do is create a free account at MoviesAnywhere.com to get started. You make me very sad that I didn't pack my Dino onesie to bring to New York so we could be in matching attire tonight. We'll have to find a reason to do it when you go home it whenever that is we will have a dinosaur themed episode so that we can match i feel like there's always a reason to do that That's so true. before we started the episode i was gonna like i everyone out there knows i am in my childhood home with my family and i was gonna run downstairs and like fish through the garbage bags filled with old halloween costumes and i i stood there in the kitchen and i'm like i could do that or i could use this time to get creative and actually make a mixed drink for a change. And that's what I did. I don't have a beer. Cheers. Cheers. I feel like this is a perfect combo. Yes, we are on theme. Like mine's like an unusual, like bloody looking drink and you have like creepy witchy green. Yes. What's what's in yours? Yeah, mine's not seasonally flavored at all. It's like mm. a pineapple cucumber lime situation it's still warm in california okay, okay. we need some drinks here i mean i don't i don't know what i just made i literally just poured some bourbon i got into a glass of kombucha and it actually tastes pretty good that sounds horrific but sometimes those combos work i i wonder if the flavor of kombucha i had picked would have made all the difference and right now i have it in pomegranate kombucha oh i believe that yeah i decided to take a little risk I like it. I like that for you and for us and our, our Halloween party. Yes, this is this is like party time right now. And you can't, I mean, actually, I was about to say you can't have a party with just two people, but we have proven time and time again off camera that you can have a party with two people, <laughs> but <laughs> we decided like, oh, well. we're opening the witching hour doors to some friends tonight. So you're going to have a whole bunch of surprise guests that are going to talk a little bit about how they're celebrating the holiday. They're going to give you some movie recommendations. We have so much fun planned, but right now it's our time. What, it, what, are, what have you been up to? Halloween is officially right around the corner. What are you cramming right now to get ready for the big day? Well, it's certainly like, not to be cute, but like definitely getting in all my nostalgic horror and Halloween films. It's right around, you know, I try to save them for when it's really time. I don't want to blow through those on September 15th or October 1st. I want it to be like the time when I get that spirit. That's fair. I don't have that kind of self-control. <laughs> like I would like to really celebrate, let's say a scream or a trick or treat and save them for the day. But I, I really watch those regularly, so it doesn't matter. I will say, though, that the other night, Hocus Pocus was on, and that's hands down one of my all-time favorites. So that kind of really got me in the mood. And then I watched um, I watched The Witches for the very first time. Oh, were you scared? I mean, I wasn't scared, but I think I was scared for all of the children who experienced that too young. Wow. Ding. Yeah, that Ding. was... <laughs> Dramatic. I think we did a list of like um, movies or movie scenes that traumatized us as children. I think my pitch was the witches. What, what part is the scariest for you? The well, sort of the iconic face situation. Okay, okay. Really, really messed. But the whole concept. Is yeah. Really, the, and especially the being turned into. Is it mice or rats? Yes, it's mice. And mice. that was that was mighty alarming yeah that really got under my skin as a kid oh I under my skin how cute am i <laughs> i kind of wish i did watch it when i was younger because i probably would have gotten a kick out of it as a kid and i still i mean i guess i still do as an adult but that yeah. 
that really does deserve to be on all of those, you know, like kids movies that are actually too scary for kids lists. Yeah, <laughs> can confirm. I, uh, I just, for the first time, it's probably since I was a kid, watched the Mary Kate and Ashley double, double toil and trouble. I have and not I, seen that in years. Right. So I think because that was the case, it was like direct impact to nostalgia, just time travel. Cause I oh. haven't seen it since I was an actual child. So I, I, I just, wow, that peeled back some layers on my cold dead heart and made me feel all the childhood feels. Was it enjoyable nostalgia though? Or was I it, it's it kind of fun, but this doesn't hold up. Oh God, it's not like a great movie, but no. I, I think it does exactly what it wants to do, which is right. make you feel young and excited about Halloween. And, you know, it's for kids. Yeah. I feel like I, I still have time to tap into that a little more, but I, I don't know. With all the movies I got on my list right now, I don't know if I'm going to cue that up next. I was going to uh, attempt a rewatch of all the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, which since it's the oh. theme of the episode are on screen pass. Don't think I'm going to have time, which makes me so sad because I love doing that full journey. That's a lot of watching. Yeah. I, rem I remember when we all split up the, uh, the slasher franchises for those ranked lists. And even just taking one and one time blowing through all the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies, that took me so long. I know. It really does. Well, that was the last time I did Nightmare was when we did those ranked lists. Uh, all right. That's a I long like time it. ago. I mean, and I've seen my favorites since then, but I, I simply do not watch Five or, you know, Freddy's Dead, which I enjoy. Nobody likes, but I enjoy it. I have fun. Is that's the that's the Rachel Talloway movie, right? Yeah. Okay. She was she was fun to talk to. I bet I just watched her uh, her new thing uh, the other night. That was cute. Oh, um, a babysitter's guide to monster hunting. Yeah, that's got I some. It was sweet. Dinner. Yeah, it's it's fun. It's a it's a fun you know world building type of scenario. It's definitely not very scary scary, but it's fun. It's energetic, and Tom Felton in that movie is just <laughs> everything. He is having fun. <laughs> Uh, I, that's kind of what I do though, is I save all my most cherished ones for the last run, but I watch all these new releases or just, you know, horror movies that I love, but aren't like strictly tied to my Halloween experience. That's mm -hmm. how I fell out like from mid September until the end of October. I gotcha. I mean, really, it's not like the end of October 31st is like a hard out with scary movies for me. And I'm not even just talking about like, oh, I'm not going to watch any scary movies. I mean, like the heavy load of scary movies that I'm consuming in all of October. That is 100 percent going to bleed into November, probably at that level until Thanksgiving. Oh, nice. I mean, wh Why shouldn't the, the cutoff be the next big holiday? Well, so here's the thing. And it's bothering me. Christmas needs to stay in its lane because I am, I am totally fine. If you want to on November 1st, go ham on Christmas. I support it because that's how I act about Halloween in September. You know, like I'm ready. I'm there. Let's do this. Stay in your lane and stay out of October. There's too many trailers. There's too many press releases going around. All right. So I, I guess I brought that up because like you're saying you carry Halloween through November. I think a lot of people go straight to Christmas at November and I respect it, but you have to wait till November. Dang it. Yeah, not not quite my thing, but I'll guarantee you that come November 1st, there's going to be Christmas mu uh, music playing in this house. I like it. I, I mean, I'm fine with it. It's not that big of a deal. It's just not my favorite holiday because I'm a little partial to Halloween. I like the spookies. Yeah, I do. I want to go back to Tom Felton though real quick because did you watch the new The Witches? No, not yet. I feel like as far as famous faces like going real ham with a role, Tom Felton might have outdone Anne Hathaway. Wow. Yeah, I, I was... I, I'm like genuinely impressed by his performance in that movie though. Like, I don't even think it's just like a funny schnick and a, like a game for him to play. I actually think that for what that character called for, it was legit a good, good performance. Good to know. That's going to go on my Halloween watch list for sure. Yeah. There's, there's, there's so a much. lot. I know. <laughs> 
there there's a lot and we're going to be we're going to be adding more soon too with all of our guests tonight i'm so excited and i'm excited to get some activities on the list too i feel like that's that's how i need to spend the next 24 plus hours that is honestly what i think i need the most help with like i know what movies i want to watch on halloween I, I, I have my routine, but I've never celebrated a Halloween at home this way. So we're going to try to figure out some ways to make that special. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. I, that's why I'm really glad we're doing this too, because I feel like if we like put all our brains together, we can really come up with ways to just make the most of celebrating this and not, not taking away from the celebration while we're all at home because it's, it's unique and it's different, but that doesn't mean you can't enjoy a uh, Halloween. Absolutely. One of my things I've been really enjoying is, as you can see, I've got my candles lit here. They're like seasonally scented. That's been totally boosting my vibe. And I like, I got everything. I got a uh, seasonally scented shampoo and conditioner, lotion, body wash. I was like, I can't like, I can at least make it smell like Halloween. I like you. I like that you went for it. I feel like one of the things in our house that really makes it feel like uh, Halloween or rather look like Halloween is when there's the uh, the communal dishes of candy corn and pumpkin seeds out. <laughs> yeah. Like Once those those are made and they're out in the kitchen, that's kind of what solidifies it for me. Yeah. Uh, how do you like to prepare your your pumpkin seeds? Salty. Salty. Nice. We, we put the we put them in the oven, so they're like kind of toasted, and then you just drench them in salt, and they're real good. So I make all kinds. I like to make some salty. I like to make some do. spicy. I like to make some <laughs> sweet and some sweet and spicy. This does not surprise me. Well, I, 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 I bet you're. I just like bet you're really freaking good at it too. Like I'm picturing like a store bought assortment. Like, you know, you know, the popcorn tins you could buy with different flavors in like the yes. different triangles. Like that is what you're doing with your pumpkin seeds. I don't know if I'm going to, you know, be able to do quite as many this year because last year I think I carved like 16 pumpkins. So there was a, a lot of seed. What? I'll see if I can uh, uh, find a picture of why I did that before, like if it doesn't taste taste too long. Uh-oh, it's... <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> well, we have, we have a guest in yes. the house right now. Well, you're looking, are you looking for that picture right now? Uh -huh. You look for it and I'm going to bring in right, guest right. number one who yeah. is here to tell us how to throw a Halloween party at home. Matt Donato is here with us today. Happy Halloween. How's it going? You guys hear me okay? It's going. We hear you. Nice. So you got you got some some heavy lifting in this episode. You're our first guest. <laughs> and you're tackling, I think, one of like the biggest, broadest categories of all. It's how to celebrate Halloween right while we're all stuck at home. Right. So while we're all stuck at home is the uh, key here because we can't really have our in-person parties as much as I would like to hollow out a pumpkin and fill it with apple bourbon cocktail and serve it to my friends. I can't do that, which is very frustrating right now. So I think the key to having a party and staying home is number one, trying to replicate some social aspect. And I feel like that's what everyone's been doing for the last however many months. We're all kind of getting used to it. So I think that also makes it a little harder because we're on Zoom right now. We've been on Zoom for how long doing these kind of things and not in person. So I feel like even Zoom at this point is a little bit outdated. And so the first thing I want to suggest, and I think Perry knows where I'm going. I know where you're going with this. I think Haley like knows where I'm going with this, <laughs> is if you're going to be throwing a Halloween party this year, I highly suggest looking up an application and platform called Gather. And what Gather is, the best way I can describe it, is this little 8-bit world that is free to use for a degree. So 25 people can come into your gather room. And if you open one up, it's like a little bar and there's little 8-bit bar stools and things of that nature. There's also tables, there's also poker tables. There's everything you want in it. And you are an avatar and you get to walk around the little world, do what you want. Picture like Pokemon for Game Boy. That's the one I keep going to because that's what it looks like the most to me. But it also does incorporate Zoom. So above your little guy, there's a Zoom little window and only you can see it in certain circles. So if you walk up to somebody, all of a sudden you see their bubble. It's like a, it replicates the conversation atmosphere. And it's the closest I've come to feeling like I'm actually in a social setting. 
So like, I, I think like that's the first key because the first thing you want to do is be with people. We can do movie marathons. We can do those kind of things. And I will suggest that right after this, but if we want to replicate the social, I suggest gather for everyone. I like yeah, we just got to experience gather for the really impressive digital film festival they put together Nightstream, And it was, yep. I think that was one of the most innovative aspects of that whole festival was how it made you actually feel like you were with your friends. And it was yeah. so cool. Highly, right. highly double that recommendation. It's, it's difficult to describe, but I feel like if there is a Zoom or a Skype naysayer out there who might think that they got bored with it and there's no way to replicate that very natural, like hanging out with people kind of feeling, definitely at least try Gather. There was something about the way you can navigate those rooms and bump into people and chat in one circle and then move over to the next. And the way that the videos popped up that as closely as it possibly could really mirrored like real life interactions. And like, it, it made me want to stay out longer, even yeah, though right. I was stuck in. Which was the issue. Cause I got way less work done than I wanted to, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean the zoom thing too, just in comparison real quick, if you got 25 people on a zoom call, could you imagine the crosstalk? Could you imagine all of those things that would complicate the scenario? It would be hard to talk like it's a normal social setting. In Gather, your little guy can go break off, go into a group up here, someone else can follow you, and all of a sudden you're having your own conversation, your own conversation over Private here. Private tables and such. Yep. So I, it, again, like it's the closest to me that I've ever felt like social settings are gonna work. And I mean, if you're doing that too, if you're stuck virtual, I think like set the mood in a way. We can all do things to feel a little spookier, especially on Halloween this year. And I'm, I'm very mad that I didn't know Haley was wearing her onesie because I gladly would have worn my wolf onesie to be <laughs> in costume. We should it's have coordinated the costumes minute. better. It should have been the onesie episode. I've got my Return of the Living Dead shirt on. That's about all I got. But like, I would have worn my wolf onesie. Uh, but wear a costume. Have fun with it. Like, don't let the idea that it's virtual still bring you down in a way. And I know it's hard. I know it's not easy. But the costume goes a little bit where... Haley's wearing a onesie once again not hard to put together like in these times you really don't want to put the effort in that's fine I have also, a cat does that make up for not having a onesie or a cool t-shirt right now I'm trying to think what generic character you could be right now who just has a cat you could just just pick one you could just say you're that I mean I I want to be Thora Birch in Hocus Pocus but like she had a really sure. cool outfit on and I'm so not that right now yeah, you're not that. No. I was thinking more pedestrian, but that's fine. But also yeah, like no, play with know. things like, oh, I was going to say play with things like lighting. Uh, it's a simple thing that I've started to do where I never thought of this concept of putting like mood lighting in my house. I've just used what I have like on my lighting fixtures and I've gotten these LED light strips that I control with colors and stuff like that. So for Halloween, when I'm watching movies, my lights will be out except for the LED strip that like goes between orange and red or something like that. And it just adds that little bit of pop that you don't really think about usually. Um, once again, to Haley staging, the little bat behind her right now, mm -hmm. clearly spookified and clearly not there all the time. And when you see that in camera view, it just looks better. So as we try to replicate the fact that we're not with each other, having a costume party somewhere, th this is what we have to do. Did you say you also would recommend movie marathons right now too? Yeah. All right, I mean, but, we're but gonna, how, how are you doing that though? Like, are you doing it solo I, or are you doing it with people? I'm glad you asked, Perry. Um, <laughs> what I'm doing this Saturday as a little prep, just to like, it, we've been doing these marathons with my friends every now and then, but we're doing randomly, one of my friends mentioned, uh, Amelia Emberwing mentioned fear.com. And then jokingly, I was like, yo, double bill that with stay alive. The Frankie Munoz joint, you got a good, good night right there. Kind of in jest, but also... Um, we're doing that Saturday and how we do these marathons is I just set out like, we're doing it during brunch. We're going to pour, pour our mimosa cocktails and watch both movies back to back. And then we'll hop in a zoom. So we get in the zoom with whoever else we're doing it. There's like five or six of us and we mute each other during the movies. So we're not like talking over the movies and stuff like that, but the chat box function is still there. So as you're kind of like movie behind my screen on my TV, obviously. I have my Zoom window right here so I can see people's reactions, which is funny because like all of a sudden you're all muted, but you look over at someone's screen and they're like dying laughing or something. And you can just like chat like, yeah, that was whatever. But the chat box is still functional. So it is a good 
live tweet, I guess, atmosphere, but still with your friends and still personal and still doing that stuff. So that's how we've been managing movie marathons. I feel like this might be a good segue to your screen pass recommendation too, which uh, could kind of facilitate a a similar feeling to a point. So Matt, of all the screen pass available titles, what did you choose to go with? Uh, One of my favorite James Wan titles, Dead Silence. Good for you. You are, you are always Donato to the, to the bitter yeah. end, aren't you? Dead Silence was ahead of its time. This is Juan playing with like everything he implemented in the conjuring with shadow work and these creepy oh. images of puppets and stuff like that. And I watch it and I get the creep factor out of bounds. Like it's so creepy. It's so amazing what they do with Mary Shaw and Billy the Doll. I, I'm in on it all. It's interesting you said that. I think when Perry and I did our James Wan episode, I called it like the proto Wan. Like it's just all of his early in tendencies in their first mm-hmm. form. Yes. That is yes, so that's true. That's exactly what it is. That part of it makes me appreciate it more. Yeah, and you should go back and rewatch it because it's fantastic and it's available. I also all wrote right, about it on Slash right. Film. Go look that article up where I defend it to the 10th degree. I've read that article. Yes. Matt, I have a question. Do you have a drink in hand? I don't right <gasps> now because I'm still working my Remember day it. job. Well, so <laughs> I listen. It's only Wednesday. You know my rule: Fridays and Saturdays. Well, we have we have a guest incoming who might be able uh, to recommend a cool drink for you to make. Do you want to meet that guest? Because I'm pretty sure Christy. I think Prussia I've met this guest. Yeah, I, I've met I this think guest you before. I might know her just like a little bit. Maybe you met her once or twice. I don't know. Is Christy here? I think we have Christy. Can we get a Christy? Boom. Oh, we that do. like really worked. Oh my God, you look amazing. Such transition. Fantastic. Hi, Thank friends. You. Hi. So I hear I hear you got some drinks for us today. I did. I invented Ooh. a special cocktail for you guys. It's called the Witch's Brew. Uh, I'm going to give you very simple instructions how to make this at home. And some of the instructions sound fancy, but they're very simple to do. So I'm gonna start off with uh, a sage simple syrup that I made. This is sage, it's awesome. Uh, I'm gonna put in half a shot of this. Get my little cocktail mixer. Boom, like a professional. And I have my little shot glass, boom. So simple syrup just means sugar water. Uh, if you want to make it at home, you can literally take one part sugar to one part water and, and put whatever you want in it. I've done this with fruits and herbs and all kinds of things. So like about a cup of sage if you want something really floral. And like if you could smell this, it smells very intensely of sage. Normally it'd be like clear. Mine is brown because I use raw sugar. It makes no difference beyond the fact that I prefer raw sugar. Now, uh, we're going to take whiskey because seasonal. Actually, whiskey's good year-round, but I like to make excuses. But it has a nice fall tone, so that's kind of the thought process here. So now we're going to take the whiskey. I'm going to take two shot glasses, two well, two shots of whiskey, which is like two ounces, basically. I'm going to fill this long side to the top and throw that in to my mixer. And then this is a little unorthodox. Uh, this is apple cider vinegar. And... The thing is that shrubs are actually really good for cocktails and that is like fruit vinegar. So this is a little more of a punch to your face. Uh, I have tried it with various things. I'm gonna do a splash, which is about a fourth a shot. So you pour that into your mixer with a bunch of ice, which I actually forgot, but that's fine. Actually here, I have this ice. There's one thing I forgot. I had like fancy ice on hand to like show off with anyway. All right, so then you shake just a little bit. You're just swirling it. Now, this is kind of cool. I got these uh, skull uh, ice molds. And then, yeah, you shake it up. You pour it over the rocks glass. Over your cotton. There you go. Now, this is quite spicy. Matt, I feel like you would like this cocktail. Perry, I know you like things a bit sweeter. So. Very, very sweet. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm gonna to top this off with just a splash of apple, hard apple cider. You could also do it with Prosecco. And then literally it's just a float and cheers. I'm impressed. Matt, Matt, do you approve? 
I approve of that. I want to make right. it. I want it now. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Matt, you should totally make your own sage. Like go to one of those fancy farmer's markets, just get some sage. You just boil it for a little bit. It's like making tea. It's I feel very like, simple. I feel like Matt and Haley would do that. And I'm just like, no. <laughs> yeah, no, I know you would never make your own simple syrup and that's okay. But, or uh, cocktail, period. <laughs> That's true. That's why I, when Perry and I have a social distance hangout, I will make her one of these and we will sit at opposite ends of my balcony and cheers each other and then sip through a mask. Please? I like that plan. I was right. making my own shrubs at the start of all this. I need to get back into that because I love them. I have not made my own shrub yet. I buy it from a farm in, in Pennsylvania mm -hmm. and uh, they do a strawberry basil that is divine. But yeah, shrubs are great. If you don't, if you're like starting to get into cocktails and like, you don't know what, to, like you, you don't know how to sound fancy, like shrub and any cocktail, like any liquor you like, and you're on a good start. Throw some soda water on it. Like shrub is, is a wonderful cheat sheet to making like very complicated tasting cocktails. Right. We'll let you go get back to work, but take, take notes, make Christie's drink and report back, please. Gladly. Please do. Happy, happy Halloween. And Matt, look, happy I'm Halloween. using a real glass. I'm, I'm so very happy. impressed, Perry. I am very impressed. We let you have one screen pass recommendation for Halloween. Your absolute must to watch. What did you pick? I picked Little Shop, Little Shop of Home. Props. <laughs> Maybe Frank Oz is best. I really love Frank Oz movies, so it's hard to pick. But because of Little Shop of Horrors, I also have this. Yes. Behold, this is a living, oh breathing my. trap that I bought in the mail and they mailed her to me. She is Audrey three through eight because there are five plants in here. <laughs> um, but it's really neat. They send you the little bulbs and all this moss and they're like, this is how you plant it. Don't mess with it. And we have actually like she has caught flies, which is really exciting. Are you kidding? Not to be a total nerd, but like if you're going to have a, an herb plant inside your house, that's a good thing to have because the soil will have fruit flies often. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's yeah. And like, yeah, Audrey's into it. And like, uh, I've, I've heard people say that they're hard to keep, but really it's just sunlight and then lots of distilled water. I've been, I've become over, over pandemic, I've become a real plant nerd. And yeah, I've learned a lot about Venus flytraps, but like when we got them, there was like several faces on there, but like now there are so many little mouths and they're so like happy to just soak up the sun. But yeah, little shop cars. Kind of want to get one now. Like you guys know, I, I'm not good with plants quite like you are, but we have a we have a fly problem in the kitchen because the dogs have to go in and out as they please. So I feel like this this could give me something to do, try a new hobby and also maybe fix that problem. Or is it not as extensive? Do they not eat them at that kind of rate? They don't eat them like very highly. And like, apparently like cultivated ones, like don't do great with, with net, like bigger flies. Cause that's not really, they're not, like, you know, they're baby. Like this poor little guy, he doesn't need to catch food. I, I like, you know, I, I like, I care for him and make sure he is, he is watered. And, um, and they drink a lot. It's really crazy. Cause they, they tell you how to plant them. And they're like, if the water goes below this level refill and you're like, okay. And like we refill, it's a little guzzler, this babe. But um, yeah, they're pretty easy to keep as long as you have enough sunlight and distilled water on hand. And I've also heard planter, uh, they're ones that look like a little cup. They're very good for catching flies because the flies like go like, oh, it smells sweet in there. And then they get stuck and they drown. I mean, I really love Little Shop of Horrors, but I feel like this fly trap 101 was exactly what I needed right now. <laughs> yeah, Little Shop is great. It has amazing songs. Often in movies, they cast like people who are actors who can also sing. Ellen Green is a singer who can also act. And like the way she sings the songs in this movie, you just can't compete. And Rick Moranis, everyone loves Rick Moranis. Watch him sing and get hassled by a plant. Also, Ryan Johnson super loves this movie. And apparently when he made Knives Out, like pestered Frank Goddess endlessly with questions, which made me really happy because that is exactly what I have wanted to do my whole life. I actually, I told you the story where I like worked on Sesame Street, right? Yes, I have yeah. I like once had the chance to meet Frank Oz on Sesame Street and I was so excited that my bosses were like, do not talk to Frank, do not address Frank. And so I spent the whole day just trying to like linger near him, hoping that if he said something to me, then I could like just be like, 
Um, that did not happen. But then like 12 years later, I did a junket for one of his movies and I got to talk to him and I told him that story. And he was like, I would have talked to you. I was like, oh, I don't think that they were afraid that you wouldn't talk to me. I think they were afraid I would not stop talking to you. I think this is a very <laughs> me centric issue, but he was very lovely. And uh, I got to tell him in person that like, I super love his movies and Little Shop is like, Little Shop you're gonna watch and then just have the songs in your head forever and it's so good. Yeah. You're gonna try to sing like her and then you're gonna fail, but you're gonna enjoy you the headphones in so you that. never know how bad you are. That's <laughs> one thing I really miss is karaoke. Like we have not yet figured out the technology to do like virtual karaoke because you need everyone to not exactly hear you and to be properly drunk. And I, I feel like that'll drunk. be our next mission. <sighs> Man, just so everyone so knows Christy is a karaoke queen like a, an absolute champion I have insecurities about a lot of things my karaoke skills is not one of them I'm not a fan of karaoke in general nothing pleases me more than watching Christy do karaoke <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's one of the reasons like there's a lot of reasons I missed festivals this year but like festivals are such a great place to do karaoke yeah. and it's like a year ago I was doing karaoke with like filmmakers and like colleagues and stuff at a fantastic fest and it was so much fun and like now it's just me yelling yell singing in my apartment to my poor husband and my plants <laughs> I I bet you anything that what what is its name uh Audrey three through eight Eight, Audrey through three eight yeah I I guarantee you it really appreciates it though I think also, so she I think our next happy. guest might have something else you could do at home to keep you a little busy right now. I have a feeling you're going to be into this, Christy. We've got Vinny here. Vinny is coming into the chat. And Vinny's topic for this Halloween party episode of The Witching Hour is drinking games. Hello, Vinny, hello. Your, your backdrop right now is this everything. Is, this is the best possession that I own. <gasps> Where do you get that? I think I typed in, like, dog blanket. <laughs> you just send them a picture of your dog. Perry and needs I, to pause the episode to do a Google search real quick. Hold on, guys. Be right back. <laughs> but it is worth every penny. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think it was cheap. <laughs> it's amazing. But it All right. Worth it. We need to we need some drinking game help. You uh, uh you have uh you have accepted the task here. So what what do you bring uh, for us? Um I have two games for you guys. Um they are well tested. They are I've tried both, both you know, alone and in a group. Uh, as depressing as that sounds. Uh, and they're perfect for a Halloween party. So I thought I would bring them to you. Uh, the first game, the first game is called Nightmare on Fancy Street. It is, um, yeah. You, uh, you can buy a bow tie or you can cut out a bow tie, it doesn't matter. And you stick it to your television. Throw on any of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. And any time that it looks like Freddy Krueger is wearing a little bow tie, or if it looks like there's a little bow tie on his hat. I love this. Everybody drinks. <laughs> and it's any, and it's any, any of the Nightmare on the M Street movies will work, except for the remake. Are you allowed movie. to like, question, are yes, you allowed yes. to like strategically place the bow tie or is it like uh, pick the pin the tail and the donkey rules where you have to keep your eyes closed? Good question. That is a great question. Thank you for asking. Um, the thing is like, there is multi levels to it. You can do one bow tie, which is the riskier one, because you know, who's who know? Maybe you'll never get it, which is nobody will ever drink. You're just watching a movie at that point. Or Ew. you can sort of do the multi bow tie level, where everybody do a bow tie, and then you can choose where it goes. But then you're you're sort of you know, and then you can decide. Oh, so if it's your bow tie, do you just drink? Mm. If it's your bow tie, do you choose who drinks? And it's important that it's not just if it's a bow tie, it's also if it looks like it's a little bow on his hat as well. I appreciate that. Because that's almost even fancier. Haley, I can't remember the last time I saw you laugh like that. I, I just, as soon as it <laughs> stick it to your TV, I knew where this was going and I had a full breakdown. And any time that it looks like Freddy Krueger is losing. wearing a little bow tie, you can play it remotely, you can play it socially distanced, you can play it by yourself if you want to, I mean, no judgment, no judgment in 2020. Yeah, man. No judgment in 2020. Stick a bow tie on your TV. I'm really, you guys I'm really these into games this. Players, so I was like, that's never happening. And now that I've heard the game, I'm like, yeah, I'm definitely doing that. <laughs> exactly. I, think yeah. I, do I immediately was like, where can I watch the those movies right now? Because the thing <laughs> is, you know, it is just kind of watching the movie. So you get that joy. But then you're sure. like, oh, like anytime. <laughs> 
<laughs> anytime he gets close to the bow tie, it becomes like a sporting event. Well, it's so funny. I was just telling Perry before you guys got here that I've been wanting to revisit all the nightmare movies before Halloween, but didn't think I'd have a chance. And now yeah. it's just like not an option. Now it became yeah. a town. Now our calendar is clear. <laughs> what is um? What's everybody's favorite Nightmare on Elm Street movie? Mine's the second because I really like Scream Queen and I, My Nightmare on Elm Street, the documentary. It's not the worst one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I like number three. Ha- Haley, you going with number three? Number three is my favorite, but I'm biased because it's the first ever actual horror movie I ever saw and it scared my pants okay. off and I just Extremely didn't recover fair. for a long time. And But I also think it holds up super well. The effects are incredible. The script is great. The direction's really fun. The cast is solid. So yeah, I'm a I'm a big Dream Warriors stand big time. I'm so plain and boring that I have to go with one. And I feel like I do that with like oh, every I, franchise. It's like when I have the Star Wars conversation, yeah, New Hope's my favorite. I was kind of asking about Vestigal because I kind of just assumed that one would be like the answer. But if it's not, no judgment upon the world. That would be your thing. answer then, I I'll guess. I feel like that would probably be my answer. But if we're going best equal three is like, I think like equally as good. It's so good. It's I, so good. I, went, I think last Halloween, I saw a double feature of the first one and the third one in theaters. And it was a great way to spend your night. Mm. Remember theaters? Oh yeah, that just made me really sad. I was like, when was that, a year ago? Yeah, we'll get there, one, we'll get one there. One single year ago, I was watching those movies in the theater. We're, we're holding strong. Thanks to everybody's at home recommendations right now. Exactly. Christy, we will let you go. Thank you so much for that wonderful demonstration and for introducing us to your plants. You're all good. I hope it, I hope it thrives and has a wonderful life and eats many flies. Me too. <laughs> I, wish that, I wish that for everyone. All right, Vinny, you said you had two games. What's game number two? I do. I have another game. Um, this one is called uh, Rye Day the 13th. Rye is in whiskey. It's very clever. Uh, but it's thing. It, it will work with any Friday the 13th, but it will also work with any slasher, basically. Basically any slasher, but it has to be a slasher that nobody in, has seen. It has to be a new movie for everyone. So here's what you do. You pour, you, you line up uh, exactly as many glasses as there are people. On one end is a huge pour, gigantic pour. You don't want that pour. It's, it's triple shot. And on the other end, little baby shot. You want the little baby shot, unless you want to go the opposite way. And then everybody picks a member of the movie's crew, like of the cast. If your person gets murdered first, you get the big glass. Uh-huh. And then if you, if you get murdered second, you get the slightly smaller, but still very large glass. And if you, you know, if you survive the movie, you get to take the little baby shot. And that game is fun because it kind of, you're like, my person's going to die. It turns it into like watching a football game, but you're watching. Like fantasy football. Exactly. Yeah. You're like rooting for your person to survive. And when they, your person starts like leaving the room or like having sex, you're like, no, no, no. It like turns you into the crowd from screen, which is all we can ask from our drinking games. Or you could do the opposite way where if you survive, you get the big boy shot, which hey, I don't. Again, no judgment. But yeah, I like I like these games because they sort of turn your already casual watching of a horror movie into fantasy football. Only it's like fantasy murder, which <laughs> But like why isn't why isn't that a thing? Can we create an app for that? I feel like if it's not, we might have just became millionaires because that's like an incredible idea. Like for next year's slate of horror movies, there yeah. should be some sort of like fantasy betting element. You get like the cast list. You get like maybe like a little character breakdown. You're like, well, this guy's gonna die for sure. This guy's strong. Like he's an up and coming actor. He's a strong appearance. Or will it be subversive? Will they take him out quick? I feel like that's like a lot more fun than football. But we should legitimately <laughs> play this with the Scream Five Ensemble right now before we know anything. Yes. Right. And th- then it's like a real game and a real challenge. I like that a lot. 4D chess here. We're in it for who, the long haul. Who is in the ense- ensemble besides the main? Uh, so people? many, so many people. There's, there's, you know, the main. We know, we know Nev Campbell, David Arquette, Courtney Cox, and Marley Shelton are returning. We also have Jack Quaid, who we all love from The Boys. We have Mason Gooding from Booksmart. There's Jenna Ortega, who is wonderful in You. Jack Quaid. Dylan is- Minnette. Jack Quaid is definitely the murderer. Jack Quaid, he's well, such a well, sweet little boy. Wait, he's such a wait, sweet little boy. He's definitely going to be the murderer. Wait, because Kyle Gallner is 
also in the movie and ha- mm. he's always a murderer. A lot of sweet little boys in that movie that are yeah, just I- like definitely murderers. I don't know. I feel like uh, radio duo, radio silence. Radio <laughs> they're like such uh, like fans of Scream. They're going to try and do like some George Lucas rhyming. They're like, they're definitely going to have like two murderers, but they're both women or like, like there's definitely going to be like some like, oh my God, they subverted the subversion of Scream. And like, okay. just, just like as a flex, which that's definitely gonna happen, but I don't know, Jack Clay. Somebody, somebody said this online and I can't unsee it. Uh-oh. They're like, you know, Kyle Gallner could really be Billy's son. Like if you look at wow. his Wow. Well, here's the thing. Um, I don't know who Kyle Gallner is. I'm gonna Google him. Uh, you will. <laughs> you, Vinny, you would <laughs> love he? Dinner in America too. Yeah. Yes, yes. Anyway. It feels like a movie to Kyle, me. Kyle Gallner. Sorry, sorry to disrupt this dream. Oh, it's important that I should have done, important that I should you have done some research. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, it's Skeet Ulrich looking man. Look at him. Oh, he was in um Jennifer's body. Yes. Yes. Colin Gray Supremacy. Always. He's so good in that. He's good in everything. Haunting of, if you man. couldn't tell, we're we're part of the Kyle Gallner uh, fan club here. Absolutely. I will looking at him. I like the theory. Um, although that's like, I it's like some Star Wars to like, <laughs> like we're gonna keep going into like their fan. About, like, this is your son. I know, but it would be kind of what you're talking about since two was the mom. Spoiler, sorry, it came out like 20 years ago. Um, <laughs> <Could> you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, that would be kind of what you were saying like where they're gonna george lucas it and like make it super yeah. cute oh yeah that's true i like yeah. totally said they're gonna do a george lucas thing so it will be like a star wars thing <laughs> i'm All excited right. for it i think it'll be good while we wait for scream 5 you have a movie that people can watch on screen pass right now it's a really yes. good movie i know it i'm ready to uh, talk about what is yeah it? <laughs> I, f- I feel like more people should watch this movie across the world wherever you, if you wherever you can find it it's called upgrade it is lee winnell before he did the invisible man which is also fantastic he did a little sci-fi horror action movie called upgrade logan marshall green he gets his tech in his neck and it sort of controls his motions and it's the first time lee winnell did his like crazy focused action which is just it makes a lot more sense than it kind of did in invisible man because it's like why would just because you're invisible doesn't make you a robot but this is cool it like it like feels like like a robot fight. It's just a really cool movie. It's not the biggest of the big, but it kind of built up, you know, almost like a cult following along the way. Like, I feel like a lot of people probably did discover it at home. Yes. I and really I- like this as a screen pass pick too, because it is the kind of movie I'd be like, oh, you haven't seen Upgrade? Yes. Allow me to fix that for right. you. It's not like spooky, but it's like, I don't know. I'm freaked out by the idea of like something else controlling my body like that so it's 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 like sci-fi horror i would i would say it's sci-fi horror the the trail the poster is terrifying so yeah it's a throw it on i don't know put a bow tie on the screen every every single time logan marshall green looks fancy put it like sideways (laughs) yeah oh my god that's like the like if it tilts perfectly everybody (laughs) has to finish their drinks so, Vinny, you gave us a movie recommendation. Before you go, do you want some music recommendations for celebrating Halloween? I do. It's well, it's a good thing that you want that because our next guest has <laughs> oh to God. give us that. Coincidence. Serena! Right. Hi. Hello, hello. Uh-oh. We can't hear you. Audio, audio has connected. Hi. Did it connect? But she's, oh, my God. Could you imagine the music okay. recommendations? You couldn't hear it? Look at I know, I would be so sad. Goblin. You have to act it out. Oh my God. I had to. <laughs> of course you uh, You look fantastic, all of you, but especially Haley. Love the costume. Little dinosaur. I get <laughs> Um, I feel like you would be proud. I made my teeny tiny niece cheddar goblin macaroni and cheese. Yes, you got it too. If you watch Mandy, uh, you know that uh, Cheddar Goblin is the most ridiculous thing to ever happen in a movie after a very tragic event, which is why <laughs> I love it so much. So, hence the mask and oh, the poster. Huge Mandy fan over here. Good to see everybody. Hello, hello. Yes, good seeing you. So we need some we need some Halloween music recommendations right now, and you are the queen of all of that. So there was nobody we were asking to fill this segment, but you. 
I'm so happy because I am so self-deprecating, but I would have been so mad. It's like the one thing I know is music, is film score music. So thank you for having me. Oh, also, perfect. Brennan just got me this. Oh my God. There you go. I'm, so I'm a, a commercial funny. right now. <laughs> it's well worth it though. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, I mean, look, you guys, we could talk for hours about this. I'm a huge uh, film score nerd. I was on Perry's channel uh, a little while ago talking and we, we you know, we, we came up with our top five. But um, I actually brought my score uh, vinyls. <laughs> so I because I'm such a nerd. So I have like all my horror score vinyls mm. with me and I brought like my favorite things that I actually like listen to these horror uh, score movies just on their own without the, like, I think they're fantastic outside of the film as well. And so to, for starters, I got Philip Glass because he's one of my favorites. Candyman, literally one of the coolest uh, musical scores ever or mm -hmm. film scores ever made. It's just so wonderful. It's so, it's such a beautiful, uh, creepy, almost ice cream truck like piece. Mm -hmm. That I love like Helen's theme and it's just it's just it's so good and Philip Glass is a freaking genius so um, I also brought a couple of underrated stuff but I wanted to, to start with the big stuff so look what I got here isn't this so pretty that is for all you, gorgeous for all you Suspiria fans out there where did that uh, where did that come from speaking of goblins. thanks to Mondo ha, of course so to Mondo <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you guys know Goblin. Goblin is one of my favorite horror, I guess, bands because they're not really a composer. They're a freaking. Here's a new drinking game. Uh, drink every time we say Goblin. That's <laughs> like. Have you been talking cool? about Goblin? No, no but just since you came on. Oh, I think mean, there's been like ten goblins. No. Okay. Apparently, I'm a fan of Goblin. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I actually have seen Goblin in concert. Like, that's how obsessed I am with them. And because you guys know them, they've done uh, not just scores for Dario Argento movies, but uh, they did, uh, you know, Dawn of the Dead, uh, for, you know, uh, the George Romero movie, etc. But they're so cool because you can just listen to this like heavy prog rock band and you don't even know, like, if you don't know who they are, if you don't know these movies, you don't you can't even tell that they're film scores. It's just so amazing. What does Goblin look like as people? Because I've only heard their music and their name Goblin and they sound like goblins. And I've always just sort of, I like didn't ever want to know what they look like as people, but like, like, are they goblin-y? I mean, I think they're like <laughs> what you would expect from like an old school, like 70s rock, like classic rock band. Oh. You know, they got like the big hair. Oh yeah. And, uh, uh, but when I saw them, I got to see them at the Egyptian theater and they had a ballerina and everything for Suspiria. Perfect. It was freaking fantastic. So, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, which concert was better, Goblin or John Carpenter? So that was going to be my next one, Perry, because I got to, to go. Unfortunately, Vinny did not come with us, but Perry and Haley and I and some other friends got to go see John Carpenter at the Palladium. Yeah. Is that in like the heart of Hollywood? I'm really bad with geography. So. <laughs> yeah, no, it was at the Hollywood Palladium. We also don't go to concerts and anymore. I, and I lost my credit card. Oh you not did. A bad, not a bad place to lose a credit card. But wasn't it worth it though? Oh my God, yes. And someone was kind enough to buy me a beer, so it all worked out. Exactly. <laughs> but wasn't that? Come on, guys, tell me about that concert because I've seen I've seen John Carpenter like five times. He's like the coolest grandpa up on the keyboard there. Oh yeah. I still play the video that I took on my phone of the old school Halloween score transitioning into the 2018 version, and I could watch it over and over and over again. That so was good. so good. And he does so he rocks those devil horns when he really gets into it. Oh, He's like, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's the best image I've ever seen in my life. What a wonderful old imp that man is. Oh, he's, I want him to be my grandpa. Like, I feel like he is all our grandpa. grandpas. I know. He is. He really is. Do you guys have a favorite of his? Or wise? Favorite. Like, move, like, fit, like score wise, yeah. Score wise? I, I think Halloween is definitely up there for me. And I, I also love Christine, too. Yeah. I also love that movie a lot. Yeah, I feel like it's just <laughs> hard to top Halloween in general. It's like yeah. everything he's done is amazing, but like he also did Halloween, and it's like, well, yeah, that's <laughs> what. Well, how do you I, top mean, I, I just love the stuff because he he had the uh, collaborator famous that worked with him, Alan Holworth. I forget. I never say the names right, but they did uh, obviously uh, Halloween three, which I think is not just an underrated movie, but it's such a cool score too. Possibly the most infectious jingle of all time. Like yes. it's never going away. Silver Shamrock. Hey, look who's behind. I guess it was like <laughs> the point, but they did it. They did they it so did well. It. Well, I, you know, I'm going to be so cliche, a cliche version of myself as always, 
but I'm just a sucker for big trouble in little China. That's my of jam. Of course. Because uh, <laughs> it's like so I good. Uh, yeah. I love that movie. I haven't seen it in too long. I just saw it at Beyond Fest at the drive in theater and it was oh, fantastic. Nice. I wish there were more uh, drive ins in New York. Anyway, what's going on none. with this, with this There's code? None. Like, I saw I saw up, you have to drive upstate for like Jaws. two hours to get to a good one. I saw Jaws at some random Brooklyn drive in. You're doing better than I am. Ooh. Of course. Look at how All pretty right. this is. This is the thing more. soundtrack, you guys. That is hey. a nice looking one. Speaking of John Carpenter, even though John Carpenter did not compose this, that was the great uh, Ennio Morricone who we lost this year. He made beautiful music for many decades that we can all enjoy on Halloween. He made a lot of music. Well, we're celebrating right now. Darina, you're sticking with us. Vinny, we are going to say thank you for joining us for this Halloween. Thank you for having me. Send send Conan our love. and He is currently right here. Very mad. Beautiful (laughs) blanket portrait. Oh man! Aww, I mean, that information. A little bit, Vinny. I know it's been like it feels like years, but it's probably only been like five yeah. months. But <laughs> it's been like ten years. It's exactly. fine. <laughs> <laughs> Farewell, all. So, Darina, we can't let you go before you give your screen pass recommendation for Halloween because, like, I just have to put this out there. I loved everybody else's recommendation. You have the recommendation. It does not get better than this one. What is it? Trick or treat. It's so good. It's so good. It's one of those. Cause you know how like Donnie Darko is like a cult classic, but everybody knows about it. I feel like so many, like even horror fans, I'm like, you've never seen trick or treat. It's fantastic. Perry has excellent posters in her house. I do. I miss my LA poster so much. As you were showing us um, the thing, I was just picturing my Mondo, the thing that's hanging right by my door in my apartment. And I just, I miss looking at it. (laughs) I know. No, but you guys, trick or treat. When I saw it, it became my favorite Halloween movie of all time. It's so much fun. It's uh, it's like sort of horror comedy. There's some pretty violent things happening there. And but the cinematography is beautiful. The cast is great. Uh, it's got my favorite line in a horror movie ever. Uh, Charlie Brown's an asshole. It's just such a good movie. I feel like I, no matter how dark and bloody that movie gets from top to bottom, you can feel just the enthusiasm for the holiday and the the feeling yeah. that, that Mike Dougherty needs to celebrate it. And I have a feeling that that's why I love just being in that world so much. Yeah, it's totally, and, Perry. I, I don't think it's, I wanted to emphasize this because you're right. So many people haven't heard about it. I was just showing the trailer to my family recently because they have not seen it. Uh, because clearly I'm a failure. I can't believe they haven't seen it. Um, but they were all like, mm, looks scary. Don't know about that. And I want to make it clear that I don't think it's really too scary for anyone who's not a small child. It does get dark and it does get violent, but it is more something that feels like Halloween and it's not going to like keep you up, I don't think, at night. My, my family isn't scared, but I'm afraid to recommend Trick or Treat to them because I'm so precious about it that if they don't like it, I might get me. <laughs> it's it. just so it's I, I can't imagine somebody not liking this movie. That's the thing, because it, there's, there's so many different uh, stories and inter- really well intertwined throughout the whole thing. And like and it's got one of the coolest, uh, I, I think, like main characters in a horror movie, uh, which I will never say his name right. But Sam, because I you Haley, you say it. No, it's Sam, Sam Wayne. in the movie. But the way the actual holiday pronounced is Samhain. So it doesn't really make sense. But Samhain. Sam, yes. Because I just read it in Spanish and it's Sam Hein. So there you go. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I think Sam only really uh, goes after you if you disrespect Halloween. So that's the best part of the movie is that you it's it's all about celebrating how wonderful Halloween is. And exactly as Perry said, I, it makes me feel like a kid when I used to watch movies like Hocus Pocus and yeah. just all those, you know, like houses that I never got to be around, like decorated in the neighborhood with kids, like with fall leaves and all this witchy stuff. It's just so great. Do you guys have a oh, go for it? Well, I was just gonna say not to be a dumb nerd and like be like, oh, cutesy, bringing it all together, but I'm gonna do it anyway. It has a great score. Like a star- Yes, it really does. Good point. <laughs> and um, I don't even know if, what's his name, Curtis something? I forget the, the composer's name. I don't even know what else he's done, but it's really great. Do you guys have a favorite segment of Trick or Treat? Uh, the, it's gotta be the bus. Yeah, I'm, I'm yes. Halloween school bus massacre all the way. Oh, I, yeah. That that one is just like 
so dark and eerie. And I think the tie-in for that one is especially effective and just like the design of everything going on in that segment. It is hands down my favorite. I'm team yeah. sexy werewolves. Not a surprise. Well, that's, I mean, that's, that's kind of my other favorite because th- they're all great, but that one is just such a good sort of fun, surprising role reversal of like, you know, stupid gender role stereotypes. It's, I just love that whole story. It's, it's really great. And I like how, I mean, this is an anthology, but it's unlike a lot of other anthologies, all very connected in one story at the end. Um, and I like how that role reversal plays into other segments of the film. I just, I, right. I think it's one of the most satisfying. And I also have to shout out uh, Sam being a little monster at the end because it's so good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Sam's my favorite, man. I'm telling you, we could hang. The score for Trick or Treat was actually done by Douglas Pipes. Douglas, and not Chris. Okay. He's got a, like, it's a, it's a shorter resume than let's say like a legend like John Carpenter, but He's got some good stuff. He works with Dowdy a lot because Krampus is on here. He also did uh, The Babysitter. Krampus. And I feel like oh. there, there's an underrated, uh, I, I would call it a good Halloween movie, but the music in The Babysitter is top notch. Yeah, that's the Sam Weaving movie, right? Yeah. Which I have right here. Anything with Samara Weaving, I highly recommend watching right now and always. We love- My favorite Disney princess. <laughs> <laughs> Darina. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out with us. I'm so happy we got to celebrate Halloween with you. It wouldn't have been a Halloween celebration without you. I'm so happy uh, you invited me, guys. It's I've been missing my, one of my two favorite brujas, my two favorite witches uh, from Collider. So thank you for having me and uh, letting me nerd out with you for a little bit. Thank you for joining us. I love us. you. I miss you. Thank you. For happy coming. Halloween. Same. Yes. Tricky, tricky Halloween. That was fun. I love them so much. I have too much to do now. I think I, I'm very torn. Like, I feel like my top priority needs to be the bow tie game because Vinny needs extra credit for that. That is incredibly creative. It's so, it's so simple good. and silly, but it's so creative. You know what the real, like, uh, button on that is for me? Like, the real punchline at the end of the joke is that it's called Nightmare on Fancy Street. It's like, <laughs> I think that's where I started to so lose it. <laughs> I, I was just watching your expression turn, like the moment he started to explain it. Oh, <laughs> I had to, to like tone it down because I almost went full tilt crazy there for a second. <laughs> and I, I know nobody probably remembers this from the beginning, but I would be remiss to leave a hanging thread that I promised to pay off to. So this is not a very good look, but a partial look at why I carved so many dang pumpkins last year oh, is I did like a big setup of a million jack-o'-lanterns and wow. it was like a whole display. That is incredibly impressive. Was, I don't think, can you see how like that one says trick or treat and that one has a bat Ooh. and a pumpkin yeah. and a little wig? Those are incredibly detailed stencils. How, how do you do that? <laughs> With stencils, so you use, uh, oh, here's a little pro tip at the end for you if you want to carve some fancy style. Um, basically, you can like print out whatever image, but you need to make sure that it's it's made for negative space, which is how you carve a pumpkin, right? Because okay. you have to have, it has to be aware of negative space and it has to make sure that you're not like carving out a big hole or you just end up with a hole in your pumpkin. Everything has to connect, you know? <laughs> Might have had that um, happen one year. <laughs> Yeah, you can find printables that are pre-made for this. And anyway, you just follow the trace with like something that you stab along the lines and then you take the paper away and then you carve those lines you left for yourself. Huh, I feel like I should try it that way. We, we carve pumpkins every year, but it is the simplest stencil imaginable and they don't look nearly as cool as yours do. I'm very impressed by your skills. Thank you. I will say that I was foolish and I did it all in one to two days before a big party we had. Um, so like, don't do that. Your wrist is gonna hurt really bad. I was gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> probably, probably felt that after. So oh, yes. I gotta play the bow tie game. I need to carve some pumpkins with your with your pro tips that will really help me out. And I really do wanna try, like what, what's even the right word? Not making a Venus fly trap, but, but planting, planting. Uh-huh. Planting and growing. Just planting and growing. Those were the words that I was looking for. What year did we go to the John Carpenter concert? Do you remember? 2018? 
That's what I was thinking. It wasn't last Halloween. It was the Halloween before, because last Halloween I was in New York. It was right before the marathon. Ah, I was like, why weren't you at my big Halloween party yeah. where I carved 16 pumpkins? There, there are very few reasons I would miss something like that, but that marathon was like eight months coming. <laughs> I remember that. Oh, gosh, we couldn't really party all month. And then this year happened. Okay, when it's next Halloween season that we're out in the world, we're, we're going are, big. We're like going to ruin our lives. We're, we're going big, but I'm glad we did this because it, it was really nice to bring people together and just to talk about the different ways that we celebrate and come up with new creative ways to do so. Because, I mean, if we need anything right now to power through all of this and not lose the things we love, it's it's coming together and getting creative and just like sharing our love of Halloween together. And that's what tonight's witching hour is all about. Yes. I can't find a good picture of all of us together, but I did find this very delightful picture of you, me, and Erlinger. <gasps> oh, oh, my phone's so messy. Gross. Ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> we all have that problem. <laughs> oh, Erlinger. Hi, Erlinger. I miss him. Happy Halloween. We miss you. Happy All right. Halloween. We did it. We had a Halloween party. This was this was great. We so hope fun. you guys had a blast. Haley, where can everybody find you on the socials so that they can keep celebrating the hol- the holiday with you all throughout the day tomorrow? Yes. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Haley Fouch. Wow. You like how I almost forgot my own name there for a second? Was- <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we've all been there. I don't drink on camera for this reason. <laughs> um, at Haley Fouch and on Instagram at Haystack McGroovy. I am at P. Nemeroff on Twitter and Instagram. And I think on both accounts, if you feel like seeing, so like I didn't, I'm terrible in, in general. Like this isn't just like a tonight on witching hour excuse. Actually, I take it back. I was about to say I'm terrible at Halloween costumes every year, but do you remember what I did last year? <laughs> Yes. I was the blow up pterodactyl on movie yes. talk. And that, that might've been an all timer, but this year I put all my time and energy into Dewey's Halloween costume and it will not disappoint. So go look on my socials for that. It's there. That's it. We are, we're out of here. Go, go check out all those movie recommendations on screen pass. Have a happy Halloween. Celebrate with all these great ideas. Stay safe. You have officially survived the witching hour. 